What's up? Guys, welcome back to the Redneck TV channel. And today we're gonna be doing a vlog. But I've been doing this a lot lately. Before I start the vlog, I'm just gonna prop you up right there, cook some breakfast. I'm trying to eat a lot of healthy food and you know a bunch of calories so I can put on a little more weight because I'm a skinny piece of shit. <laughs> So I'm gonna cook myself some bacon. Uh, should I cook sausage? Yes, I gotta cook sausage too. I got that bacon for us thick boys. Woo! Got some brand new knives. Yeah. Paper towels are wet. Mm -hmm. Ladybugs, dude. Everywhere. Disgusting. <laughs> we got some baby ass rolls of biscuits now. Cause I realized every time I cooked five of the big biscuits, like I only ate three of them. So I just tried to find the smallest pack of biscuits I could because you know, I'm only cooking for myself. It's dumb as hell to cook a bunch of food and throw it away. I don't even know what honey butter tastes like on these biscuits. It smells like it would taste like ass with some gravy. 400. Do not eat raw biscuit dough. Why? It landed back on there. I'm gonna cook two sausage patties as well, but I'm gonna make the gravy out of the bacon grease this time. I never make gravy out of the bacon grease and yeah, I just wanna try it for once. I'm gonna see if this top right burner works. I never tried it before because there's like cracks in it. As you can see here. Oh yeah, it's getting warm. It works. I guess all these burners work except for this big one. I mean, the big one still works. It's just if you turn it on, it's gonna catch something on fire more than likely. I probably don't wanna use that one. I don't really even wanna use this top right one because it's just so close to this broken glass, but oh well. What's the worst? Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I literally just caught my stove on fire. I clicked this burner instead of that one. What? Why? Why? Goodness, I'm such an idiot. I literally just turned this burner on on accident, and there's a bread tie in there, and it started catching on fire. I just about burnt my house down. Like, what the hell am I doing? Oh, yeah. Not really cooking even, though. That's great. Exactly what we wanted, unevenly cooked bacon. Yeah! Yeah! Okay, I paid $9 for some Williams Country Sausage Patties, and they're all unorganized and frozen together. Exactly what I wanted. Thank you, William. These ain't stuck together, though. Why in the hell is this bacon burning? I burnt the hell out of this bacon. Ha! Look at that. One side of it's raw and the other side's black. Who in the hell would eat that? I already know people are gonna comment, kids in Africa could have eaten that. I mean, they can, but I don't really wanna go to Africa just to deliver them three pieces of bacon. I promise it'll be okay, y'all. Nasty. Uh-uh. That ain't happening around here, son. Ouch! That was hot. Speaking of hurt, on last night's live stream, I had a little injury. It don't even look like nothing at all, but on the live stream, it was bleeding pretty good. Why does this bacon keep shriveling up in the shape of a penis? Balls and wiener. If y'all are wondering, last night I live streamed on Twitch just because, like, I've been busy a little bit this week from Thanksgiving stuff. So I was like, yeah, I might as well stream or something. Do something for y'all. So I hopped on Twitch, got on Fortnite on my computer, and I played, and a lot of y'all seem to enjoy it. But if you want to check me out sometime and see me rage on Fortnite, Night. I didn't even mention that's how I got this scar. Picked up my keyboard and slammed it on my desk just playing around and the whole desk like fell apart. It took me like an hour to get the little drawer to go back in. Cut the hell out of my arm doing it. But yeah, if you want to see me do some dumb crap like that, all you got to do is look me up on Twitch. RNTV Games. Give it a follow. Cook two more strips of this. There's the little piece I chewed up and spit on it. I ain't eating that. Burnt the bacon. Good job, Kenny. You burnt it. Oh yeah, spray all over my hand. That's exactly what I want you to do. William. Nah, I didn't burn it. Didn't really burn it at all. Now I want to make some gravy out of this bacon grease. I guess we used all our flour. Hope it's enough, because if not, I guess they just ain't gonna have gravy. Oh yeah, look at her turn to gravy. By the way, y'all, I never even told y'all, but after we get done eating breakfast, we're gonna go to Rule King and get some oil for my truck and a drain pan, because I don't have one. And we're gonna change our oil, finally. It's been like 15,000 miles since I've last changed my oil, but it does have an oil leak, so I've added a few quarts to it every now and then. So the oil shouldn't be too black, but it's probably gonna be pretty dirty. It'll definitely show you why you need to change your oil. But also, while I'm down there changing my oil, I'm gonna try to diagnose 
diagnosed the oil leak that I have. I've had this oil leak for like a year and I haven't even like crawled up under my truck to see where it's at or nothing. I'm a lazy ass. I wanted to save it for a video for some reason, but I was a lazy ass and I never recorded videos, so that's why I never diagnosed it. But now that I record a lot of videos, that's what we're gonna do. Holy crap, dude. I've honestly, I've never made gravy that looked like this before. Like you gotta see this crap. Look at that right there, boy. That is some good stuff. Good and thick. No lumps. I'm gonna put a little milk in it because it is kind of thick. That was a cockroach. I could have swore I was a cockroach or a beetle or something. I don't know what kind of bug it was, but it ain't touching my food. I cooked that shit. <coughs> We're gonna try to eat every single thing that we cook. Try not to be wasteful. And because, I mean, I cooked it and bought it, so why the hell wouldn't I eat it? Cutting my life into pieces. My last fork. Domestication. No breeding. Guys, I want to show y'all one more time how creamy this gravy is. Like, I've never made any gravy that looks this good before. To the people who said I can't do a proper hype dance. Alright y'all, we're gonna try a bite of this gravy to see if it tastes as good as it looks. That is the best shit I've ever made in my life. Oh my gosh. Dude, the biscuits taste so good with it and I can taste the bacon grease. Like when I made sausage gravy, it never tasted like this. So I guess I'm gonna start using bacon grease, y'all. Apparently it tastes way better. And one of y'all said I was nasty or crazy because I didn't put sausage in my gravy. Well, you know, if you make gravy that actually tastes worth a damn, then you don't have to put sausage in it. You can just eat it alone. Hell, I could eat that whole pot of gravy right there right now with nothing else but it. And I wouldn't even throw up. You know why? Because it's good. I'm just kidding. I'm not like a pro cook or anything at all. I'm just surprised I made gravy without a bunch of flour lumps in it. But guys, I'm going to finish up my breakfast real quick. Before I leave to go get my oil and whatnot, I'm going to show you all my new computer. So I'll be back. All right, y'all. Finally done eating. I'm going to show you all my computer real quick. That's what it's called on the box. And that's what it looks like right there. It looks really clean. This is my desk. It's kind of dirty because I streamed yesterday. Woo. All right, y'all. About to pack a dip. Kodiak Wintergreen today. So if you're at home and you ain't got one in, pack one with me, y'all. Plug in some jams. Ah, oh, it's one thing I need to fix really bad with this truck. Rubs like hell. But I'll get back to y'all. We just got out of Rule King, like a million people here because it's Black Friday. By the way, happy late Thanksgiving. I didn't get to tell y'all Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving on a YouTube video because I was doing like family stuff and whatnot. But this is the oil I got. Just some Mobile One 10W30 synthetic because why not? I just thought I'd give it a try. I also got a drain pan and a good funnel because if you didn't know, the motor that's in my truck, I think it's out of an 03 Lincoln. And where you fill up the oil, it's on the wrong valve cover and it makes it super duper hard to get to. So I need that long skinny funnel like that. But anyways, we're going to go back to the house and change the oil. Okay, so I just left and I realized I forgot an oil filter. So I got to go get that real quick. All right, y'all, we're back at the house. First thing we need to do is find our tools. Pretty sure my drain plug's a 16. I'm gonna show y'all how I change oil from step one. First, you gotta pop the hood and then take your oil cap off. You don't actually have to take your oil cap off before you drain it. That's just always what they did at Ford. I think they did that to prevent taking the drain plug out and then draining all the oil and not putting it back in. That way it would save time if you was curious, like you'd be wondering, did I put oil in that car? And you wouldn't have to go grab the dipstick, check it. You could just look, oh, the oil cap's off, put oil in it. I don't know, they just always did that at Ford. That's why I do that. We got seven quarts of Mobile One full synthetic. My truck takes 520, I'm putting 1030 in it. I know you're not 
supposed to do that. I yeehaw the hell out of my truck, so I think it needs some thicker oil to prevent metal on metal contact. Surprisingly, there's a lot of people in the world that's messed up on this, but if you find it hard to figure out which drain plug to take out, all you gotta do is look at the motor and the pan that's under the motor, that's the bolt you wanna take out. The oil pan drain plug. Don't drain your transmission fluid and double fill your oil. I've known a lot of people that's done that before and I even knew somebody that did that like working as a technician. So make sure when you pull the drain plug, it's not red fluid, it's, you know, brown oil. You should know what oil smells like. If you don't know what oil smells like, you probably shouldn't change your oil. But here's the thing I first noticed looking at my truck. My freaking front drive shaft is soaked, dude. Look at that, man. I don't even know what that is. Get a smell sample. I can't smell it. I mean, it's black. It looks just like motor oil. It don't smell like anything, though. I have to figure out where that's coming from, because that's not good. I don't think it's coming from my front diff, but that's like the only thing you would think it'd be coming from. Here's a little redneck rig I did here. Put a zip tie around my selector because it came off one day. I can see oil's been dripping off of it. Yeah, it's probably motor oil. Yeah, it's probably just that valve cover leak coming all down through here. And No, that's diff fluid. That, that's That's can't smell it i don't know y'all we're gonna just fix the oil leaks one day and see if that goes away clean it up with some brake cleaner real good after i fix the oil leaks and if it still looks like that then we probably know it's not motor oil no for sure back here my trans is leaking oh doesn't that fluid look nice look at that fluid coming out of that tranny boy oh that's wonderful milky how the hell does my truck still shift i think it's overdue for a trans flush Ugh torque converter looks nice and rusty good thing about this lift kit is it's a lot easier to crawl under here and work on it now So yeah, just letting y'all know, if y'all get a lift kit from Rough Country, this is gonna happen every time you change your oil. Kind of annoying, cause you know, it gets everywhere, but oh well. I guess it lubricates your metal real nice. So yeah, as y'all can see, that oil is black as hell. I'm gonna look at this leak a little better, y'all. Looks like there's a little coming off the rear main back here. Not too bad though. It's not like we gotta fix this right away or anything. I can definitely tell my front cover is for sure leaking. If y'all didn't know, I did a timing chain on this truck, like, maybe a year ago i changed my timing chains my guides my tensioners you know everything you got to change when that shit stretches out what happened to me is my guide blew out and it was causing a big rattle it almost blew up my motor because it clogged up the oil pickup tube with a bunch of plastic and i had like no oil pressure so i'm surprised this motor didn't quit then but it's been several thousand miles later and it ain't gave out on me yet i haven't changed the oil in like i said about 15,000 miles haven't done any maintenance on it really haven't looked at it at all i didn't even notice this until yesterday and yeah y'all this is motor oil in here for sure dripping down from the front cover and the valve cover and it's getting all over the oil filter and the oil sending unit and then it's dripping on top of the front diff and then just slinging all over this drive shaft and about the transmission leak and the fluid coming out of it what am i gonna do i, I have no clue honestly I, i'm probably gonna give my transmission a flush that's probably the worst thing you can do for a high mileage transmission because like you know you don't want to swish around too much shit in there it's kind of old i don't want to mess nothing up i don't know y'all what would y'all do if y'all saw that fluid come out of your train would you immediately buy a new transmission or what because i can tell you right now it was slipping about six months ago and it don't slip at all now it just shifts hard as hell still works <laughs> but anyways i think this oil is pretty well drained find this drain plug where the hell do we put it i'm gonna find a napkin and wipe the grass off this <laughs> And another thing, when you're tightening your drain plug, yeah, that's about as tight as you want it. You don't want to get on your drain plug and get all the leverage and Because what you're going to end up doing is snapping that drain plug off into the oil pan, and then you're f***ed. you got to take the oil pan out, redo, rethread. Uh, it, it, it's a bunch of complicated bull crap. You don't want to get into it. Save yourself thousands of hours and just tighten your drain plug like a normal human being. Just hand tight it's all you need i promise scoot it over here to this oil filter now this is kind of terrifying me because i know when i first put this oil filter on i tightened the hell out of it because i had a little leak on it and i currently have no oil filter wrench and or pliers so i'm kind of screwed here we just got to hope our hulk strength and rage comes in handy i just got to think of something that makes me super mad
mad so I can get it off. But if you have the same truck as me and you're wondering like where the oil filter's at, it's right up there. Yeah, y'all can see that oil what I was talking about. I'm gonna grab a pair of gloves for grip. Oh my gosh, it, it's not coming off. It ain't, it ain't. Oh, I got a rock in my back. Silly Ford, mud is for Chevys. Well, y'all, the only other trick I know to get an oil filter off is to hammer a screwdriver through it, but there's literally nowhere you can swing a hammer, and I don't even have a hammer. I don't know, y'all. I really need the oil filter wrench. Ah! I can't get it. That's all my strength. It ain't coming. Oh, my hand. Ah. I'm gonna bring y'all around to this other side. Ah, blaster has no give in it at all. Gotta put the hat on for good luck. Get this fucking oil filter off. Ah, ah. Yes, I'm spinning it the right way. Ah. Ah. All right, I'm gonna get a screwdriver and a ratchet and try to hammer the screwdriver through the filter. That's not a really good idea because if I bust a hole in the oil filter, then I'm screwed. Why did I not buy an oil filter wrench? Oh yeah, by the way, another thing, I'm looking at my oil filter right now and my damn motor mount's missing every single bolt except for one and the last bolt has like three threads left in it. Our motor is being held up on one side by one bolt. You can see there that the bolts are missing. Gosh dang it, that sucks. I'm gonna see if I have an apparatus laying around the house to get this oil filter off. Be right back. I got a Phillips screwdriver and a pair of vice grips. I'm gonna try to do this. Maybe I can just shove this screwdriver through the oil filter with some yeehaw strength. <laughs> Mud in my eyes. You didn't know the worst thing imaginable is to work on a truck with mud all under it. Safety glasses or not, you're gonna get mud all in your eyes. So do yourself a favor and keep your truck clean. Don't be a lazy piece of shit like me. I mean, if I had something nicer, I'd probably keep it clean. Just that, you know, I'm just gonna get this truck muddy again, so why clean it? Come on, I know we can get this. <coughs> I got a piece of mud in my lungs. Keep getting mud in my mouth. This oil filter is made of piss, sweat, and vinegar. Uh, let me try stabbing it through it. Oh! Oh, I smoked my elbow, bro. Smoked it. Right in the hilarious tendon. All right, let's see if we can get this off. Oh, oh drain pan. Drain pan. Pull the screwdriver out. Now we got a metal shard to grip onto. Ugh, damn it. Getting oil all over my shirt. Got oil all over this nice jacket. So I got it to turn a quarter turn, but... That's not really enough. I have to stab this screwdriver back through this other side. So that's the damage we've done. Ah! Stab another hole! Ah! Stab! <laughs> oh, drop the whole filter. Where'd you go, bastard? There you are. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I kind of want to cut this open to see if there's any metal shards inside of it. Squish the material inside of it and like wring it out with a vise and then spread it open. And if you shine it in light, you could see all the metal shards that are in your motor. And I'm sure there's tons in here. I just, I don't have a vise, so yeah. Another thing about changing your oil. When you take your oil filter off, make sure, is there oil on my nose? I can see in the reflection. But anyways, when you take your oil filter off, make sure that this comes off with the oil filter. It's your O-ring, and sometimes the O-ring likes to get stuck up there on the engine block. And what will happen is you'll screw your new oil filter on, and your new oil filter will already have an O-ring. And then when you tighten it up, the one that's already on there will like wedge up in a weird way, and it'll cause a leak. So always make sure you got the O-ring off. And make sure the new one has an O-ring. Like before you buy the oil filter, open it up, make sure it's got an O-ring. I always do it. This is a thing I've always done every time like I change oil. I always wear gloves and then when I take my glove off I like wrap the glove around the oil filter like so and then just stick it in the box throw your other glove in there too and now you ain't got a big mess another thing I like to do is I like to put a fresh glove on when I put the oil filter back on I just feel like I got way better grip with a new clean glove rather than my oily slippery hands we're just gonna try to stick her up in here like so get her started when you put her back on you want to kind of give it a few umps you know kind of make sure she's tight <sighs> So yeah, y'all, this is what my oil looks like. I can definitely see some mud waves splashing around in there. There's a lot of mud in this oil. Yeah, there's there's definitely gasoline in here. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and top her back off with oil. I'm gonna stick y'all over here. Hopefully y'all can still hear me. Get her funnel, stick her in a valve cover. Now we dump the oil in. All right. Funnel's pouring way too slow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the funnel about right there so the mouth is wider so I can shoot out more oil. I'm using the dullest knife possible for the job. Knife sponsors, hit me up. <sighs> yeah. Now this will be better. Yeah. A lot quicker now. You 
don't know exactly how much oil you need to put in your motor, then you should probably check your dipstick before you drive off. I just know that mine takes about seven quarts, so seven quarts, it's it's fine. Now you're probably wondering, Kenny, what do I do with all this brown lubricant? Well, get your old jugs, open them up, set them on the ground, funnel. I can see a lot of little shiny speckles. I don't know if y'all can see them, but if you shine it in the light just right, there's little specks everywhere of shiny metal. This is the number one reason why you should always change your oil. It's because over time, oil, it changes, you know, it just expires, I guess, if you want to call it that. And its lubrication features slowly fade away as the oil ages and gets used. So after about 5,000 miles, you should always change your oil. That's the typical number most people change their oil at. Some people swear, oh, 10,000 miles, oh, 3,000. It don't really matter. I mean, just as long as you change it every once in a while, I mean, hell. Pull open your owner manual and, you know, your owner manual is going to say some bullshit. I don't know. It's your damn vehicle. Do whatever you think's best for it. Now we'll start her up. Make sure it don't gush out oil from the bottom. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I hope you like today's random vlog. Just, you know, me, just the camera basically following what I'm doing throughout the day. If you like these kinds of videos and you want more, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments what kind of content you like. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. We are centimeters from hitting 200,000 subscribers. We are currently at 198,000 subscribers, 2,000 more, and we got it. So please help me reach that goal. Hit the sub button. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, redneck.tv. But I'll catch you next time on the Redneck TV channel. Later.